G'day guys, Luke McElroy from Mets Performance Consulting here. Today I want to talk to you about how to accurately determine your aerobic and anaerobic thresholds. Or another word for your aerobic and your anaerobic threshold would be your zone two heart rate and your functional threshold heart rate or your, or your lactate threshold or all these words mean the same thing. So we're looking for our aerobic threshold, which is our zone two, and our anaerobic threshold, which is our FTP. And Traditionally, what we do is we use generic equations. So we might use a percentage of max heart rate, so 220 minus your age, and then do a percentage of that to find your FTP or to find your zone two intensity. Or you might use something like the math method, which is designed to find that aerobic threshold, okay? Now, these, th these things are generic equations. They're gonna work for, you know, 50%, well, in theory, 66% of people. It's a, bell it's a bell curve, so it'll work for two thirds of people, but be wildly inaccurate for the rest. So I wanna show you uh, actually how we, we can physically measure these zones. So we've got some data from a VO2 max test. You can see at the top here, uh, we're looking at our, our v, VE over our VO2. So VE is ventilation. That's the amount of air that you're breathing in per minute. And VO2 is the oxygen that you're extracting from that air. Now, what we're looking for for this graph is essentially when, when it's a, a flat line, so line of best fit through there, it's, it's, it's reasonably flat. When we have a flat line, what that means is as our oxygen consumption Sorry, as our ventilation, the air that we breathe in goes up, we have the same increase in our oxygen consumption. Okay, that's the goal. We don't we, we want them to be a linear relationship. As we breathe in more air, we get more oxygen. Yeah. Then what happens as we increase the intensity? So once we get to sort of this section here, you can see that we're, we've got a steady incline. So what that means is our oxygen consumption is still going up sort of like this. But to do that, to, to get that oxygen consumption up, we need to have a, a non-linear increase in our ventilation. So we need to breathe in more air for that to happen. All right. This is our VO2 down here. This is our ventilation up here. All right. So we're breathing in a hell of a lot more air to get the same sort of oxygen consumption. That's not ideal. This would be our threshold tempo zone here. And then lastly, we get a, a, a larger increase towards the end. And again, what that means is that our Oxygen consumption is going up like this, but we need an even larger amount of, of air to breathe in to get that. So that's the worst part. That's when we're beyond threshold. We see a big increase. So the two things we're looking for here, we call it ventilatory threshold number one and ventilatory threshold number two. Now, number one, all it is is a line of best fit and looking for the, the first non-linear increase in this graph. So I've got my little rule here. You can clearly see that if we put a line of best fit through the starting point here, uh, it's quite clear that the point, the, the first non-linear increase is this point right here, okay? So that's our ventilatory threshold number one. That's our zone two heart rate. I'll go and correlate that to exactly what it is in a sec. So you see there, happens there, which is about, uh, not, it's exactly nine minutes in, all right? That's our VT1. Let's write that down, zone two heart rate. Then the next thing we do is do the, the next non-linear increase line of best fit from VT1 up the graph. So you can see here, if I put a line of best fit through there, again, it's quite obvious that the first non-linear increase based on that line of best fit is just this point down here. So this is our VT2 or our threshold, our lactate threshold, anaerobic threshold, lactate inflection point, FTP, all of these words mean the same point. So that's the heart rate that we would hold theoretically for 45 to 60 minutes. And that's all we have to do. So now we just have to obviously line that up with what the heart rate is. So down here, we're at nine minutes. And up here was at 17 minutes 30. So if I go back to the VO2 max testing data, so I'm looking for nine minutes and I'm looking for 17.30. So at nine minutes, you can see our heart rate's 143. So this athlete's zone two heart rate should be 143. We don't base it on an equation, we base it on a physically measured um, number based on the data. And then 17.30 is his lactate threshold or anaerobic threshold, whatever you want to call it, is 168. Again, not a percentage of max, physically measured on the data set. Uh, and that's essentially it. So look, sometimes this works with the math method. Sometimes this works with the 220 minus your age. My point being, I, I've had a 37-year-old athlete whose zone two heart rate is 180. All right, If your zone two heart rate is 180, you do the math method, 180 minus 37 equals, what's that, 143. He'd be training almost 40 beats too easy if he did the math method. So that's going to be significantly detrimental 
to his training stimulus, to his performance. So although it may work for some people, it is really important that uh, for if you want to train smarter, get the maximum bang for your buck out of your training, we need to find this VT1 and this VT2. And the only way we do that is through lab testing, and it's pretty accessible now, so you, you may as well go and do it. Um, that's it from me, guys. Hopefully, if any follow-up questions, um, put a comment below. But uh, that, it, it really is as simple as that. If you're trying to find VT1 and VT2, that tells you your zone 2 heart rate, and it tells you your threshold.